What's up guys, Ender Unknown here. I'm back for episode 3 of our Unity Splunky style game series. And today we are going to be working on making the entrance and exit doors and rooms of our little cave system that we have here. So I wrapped it up last episode with a little time lapse that, uh, when Unity lets me load here, there we go. Uh, making all these different caves and whatnot. I know they don't look particularly nice right now. Uh, we're going to be working on that. So, yeah. I think everything's good from here. But the caves don't look great at the moment. We're going to work on that in a future video. You guys probably can and already have added variation to them. Because part of the main thing that makes these boring is that it's like this is the same cave, just duplicated. And also, I'd recommend making them less jagged than I did. So, like, if you see here and here, that doesn't look very good. Gotta smooth it. I don't know. I might change some stuff with that. I really don't know. We're gonna make a background and a boundary wall. Mm, probably in this episode, I think, too. Because I don't believe the cave rooms are gonna take us too long. Anyways, I would like to get started. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is actually make a new sprite. I've already done this to save time, and I'm calling it, I just called it passageway. So when you're importing it, I made it a 96 by 96 pixels. So if you can see, our base unit is a 32 by 32 uh, block, to say. So this is going to be a 3 by 3 of blocks, and uh, so that would be 96 by 96. We are going to need to make the pixels per unit 32 to make that ratio proper. And we are also going to be changing our filter mode to point and our quality to none. So our compression quality to none. Um, so yes, that should get us our passageway looking better. If you can see, we just have here, it should be taking up three spaces. Uh, I know it doesn't really look like it but uh, they're... it's wherever the box goes, I guess. Uh, so we are going to be doing some stuff with this. The first thing is um, we need to add a script for it. So I'm going to go into our scripts folder and just going to create a Sherp script called, I don't know, entrance door. And we are going to open that and work on that in Visual Studio. So I'll be back when that loads. Okay, now that entrance door is uh, created, we're going to have to actually do a quick thing in our generation code. Right under our first stage done, we're going to make another public static bool uh, called ready for player. That is going to equal false. So this is going to be uh, checked to true by some mechanics we're going to add in in a different video once we work on the player and finish up all the other generation stuff. Uh, to generate the player after the rooms, after the enemies, after the loot, and all the other changes have been generated. So it's not the player comes in and then just stuff's popping up around them, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyways, in, back in our entrance door, we are going to get rid of the start method, and I'm going to get rid of the uh, update little... We're, we're not getting rid of the method, just the little... I don't know, what is that note text... Reminder text? I don't know. Uh, this is going to be a very simple script here. So all we have to do is a uh, public game object called player. And then on an update, if... And actually, we're going to want a public bool called flag. That is going to equal false. Or maybe I should make this... Flag is what uh, professional coders often use. Uh, to determine if something needs to be... It, it's just a common name for a boolean value. Uh, I guess for simplicity or to make it more user-friendly, I'll call it uh, has player spawned. That's going to equal false. So if uh, generation dot ready for player is equal to true, but we don't have to write that because booleans work that way and has player spawned is equal to false which will indicate like so uh, then we are going to want to 
generate, or actually say spawn in player game object. So yes, that is pretty simple here. We just have to instantiate our, and actually the last thing we're going to want is a position called spawn point. So we could spawn it at the position of our asset here, but then it would, the player would spawn in the center and then they'd fall. So we're going to want a, uh, a transform called spawn pos. And for that to work, what we're going to need to do is instantiate a instance of our player at the transform of spawn pos, and that should all be good. Now I'm going to make a, well actually no, we'll do that later. So what we're probably going to want to do is get a variable of the player and then set information and data to it, but we're not going to do that now. So uh, we'll just leave that. And then of course has player spawned is going to equal true. So we don't spawn more than one player. That is all we have to do with entrance door and I will be back in Unity to continue off from there. Okay, so now that we have our script, I'm going to rename this to entrance door, and I'm going to stick our component on it. So we don't currently have a player game object, so we aren't going to see this working. Uh, I think it's gonna it's gonna cause an error. So I don't know what we're going to do for that. Uh, I'll go change something quick later that I'll show you guys. Or actually what we could do is just check has player spawned so then it can never spawn the player. And actually we don't even need to worry about that because we have no mechanic to make it think that the player is going to spawn anyways. Cut. Remove last segment. Okay, uh, now that we have our script, we are going to put that on our passageway, which I'm going to actually rename to entrance. Entrance door. I guess in Unity you can use spaces. It's weird. <laughs> uh, we don't currently have a player game object, so we're not going to put anything there. The player can't spawn, so we're not going to get an area. Or uh, not an area, an error, because it requires that one boolean value in generation in the generation script which is never going to be set true uh, so then what we're going to want to do is create a spawn point as a child of it so this is going to be called spawn point i like setting the the icon equal to something so i'm going to do uh this blue sorry if you can hear my dogs barking in the background and we are just going to move this very precisely to the bottom. And actually I need to zero this. Zero and zero. There we go, it's up here. Now I am noticing that, interestingly enough, is it's not So let's see, one, two, three, that should be right. What's not right is that the, oh no, that would be, that is right. So yeah, this should work. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll change it when we do the player. So the player will be spawned here, the player's center. That actually might need to be up one, so. Goodness, I, I, since I we haven't made the player, this is really hard for me to think. So I'm actually going to just move this spawn point up by one and then we're just going to leave it and we'll change it when the player becomes a thing. So in prefabs, I'm going to probably just put this in our generic folder. Uh, I think we've configured everything that we can so far. And uh, yeah. So we're just going to do that. Entrance door. Delete. I'm going to save. Now for a room. You're going to need to grab a room for that. I'm going to just 
use a room that we already have and then edit it. So we're going to want a, mm, I don't know, probably a left, right. We could maybe do a left, right, bottom. Really doesn't matter that much, I don't think. I'm going to zero this component out and add a little bit of a change here. So I'm just gonna use the duplicate to fill in this little bottom area. And I had noticed this with the top one is that, oh. Oh, I bet it still thinks it's a prefab. Oops. Nope. Cannot be deleted and can You can open a prefab structure. Unpack. See, this is new. This is new Unity stuff. I have no idea. Oh dear. Uh, I have no idea what's going on now. Well, it doesn't like me deleting things. I know that much. Can I? Oh, unpack. Interesting. I'm going to delete this and create another one. And I think it wants me to unpack it. Yes, there we go. Sorry about that. That is, I, I honestly, this is silly, is I haven't updated Unity and I've been using the old version of Unity, the 2018 version for <laughs> a very long time. Uh, and yeah, that is probably not good. This looks a little bit too symmetric, but maybe that's okay, because it is a like a mine or a cave. I don't know. You guys can make it look however you like. That's fine. And we're just going to grab our door prefab and stick it right in the center there. Want to... Make that on the grid. There we go. Oh yes, and of course that is going to be uneven. I should have maybe given this some more thought, but that is okay. We are going to break the positioning rules just a smidge. No one saw that in the slightest. Uh -huh, this isn't gonna make any difference because it's not an actual block. The grid is purely for blocks. This is a uh, external entity. So, oh, and this actually needs to be in here. So what's going to happen is this is going to spawn in and our door will spawn in, all the tiles are going to spawn in, and then the player will spawn in eventually. So yeah, that is pretty much all we need to do for the entrance. I'm going to rename our little prefab thingy up here to room cave entrance one we could maybe make different ones later with different shapes or configurations, but uh, this should be all we need. Going to, of course, add a new folder called entrance. I'm going to be moving the prefab in there and deleting it from our game world. And perfect, it even has a nice little thingy here. We're going to be going into our nodes and our start node and we are going to lock the start node go find our entrance and put it in like we did last oops last video so now this should create our entrance thingy and that should all be good so if i run code here now you see we only have one error but that's because our entrance spawned properly so I know I guess this could be considered just me being lazy and if you think that you're absolutely right. I'm going to be using the same asset, not not the uh, same sprite, there we go, for the exit door. So yeah, <laughs> kind of boring, but I don't know. You guys could maybe make a different one. It's supposed to be a cave. The entrance and exits can be the same. That's fine. If you guys have the time, go make a different sprite. Sure, that'd be cool. Or even randomize the sprites. Anyways, that is all we need to do for our entrance room, and now we are going to move on to our exit room. So, yes, that involves another script. So, I don't know, exit door. And that will be opened in Visual Studio. So I'll be back when that opens.
Okay, we have our exit door loaded. This is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to delete uh, everything in the script. And we are going to make a public void, I don't know, next level. Because, sure. And we are going to be needing to use, using unity uh, dot scene management. And then we're going to do scene manager dot load scene and then just the name of our scene which i think is game with a capital g i honestly can't remember i've been working on a different coding project so not in unity but uh so actually we're gonna go look here yes it is game we're gonna have to do some extra configuration to make this work but that'll be for um probably a different video because the player's gonna activate this we're going to head back into Unity, and then I will be back to show you guys how to set up this final part. Okay, now that we are back, we are going to be finishing up our video here with, uh, or this part of the video with the uh, exit door here. And to do that, we need to first add our scene to the build settings. So, oh, I should probably... It's in file and then build settings or control shift B and then we have to add open scenes So then we have game and th what that'll do is it'll allow uh, What's it called? That scene manager to find it because it's scenes game so yes, that should work and I'm just going to Pretty sure I can close out of that and it saves control shift be. yes indeed yeah so then we have to make our actual prefab so I'm going to go drag the entrance prefab and we're just gonna re reuse this one uh, I'm going to remove the room oh I have start node locked I was like what <laughs> uh, I'm going to remove the entrance door script but or component and then going to rename it to exit door and actually I want to get rid of the prefab thingy unpack prefab I'm going to delete the spawn point and we have to add two things here quick so the first one is we're going to need to add a um, our exit door mm, script onto here and then the second thing is we are going to need to add a hitbox so we're going to do 2D Collider, sorry. And we have to adjust this. So we are going to make it a trigger. Because what we're going to do is the player is going to check if they are within this trigger radius. And we might have to change it later. Uh, but if they are and they press a certain button, they're going to be able to exit the, the encounter. So I guess you guys can make this however specific you want i'm just going to do it like that so if as long as the players within this area they can move on to the next uh part of the game or whatever the next level and yeah that is all we're going to need for our exit door so i'm going to just save and we are going to go make this a prefab exit door delete it again i'm going to be doing a uh, left, right, bottom, top thing. We're going to zero this for simplicity. And we will make this into a our exit room. Oh, I need to unpack the prefab. And rename this to room K exit 1. And of course, you can have different combinations of this. I'm going to try to make it look nice by changing it up from some of the other rooms. Just a tad, I, I know this is not very good. There we go, that's a little better. At the bottom here, delete, delete, delete. Control duplicate, make a flat little ground and then I'm just gonna put it on a raised platform. Mm, probably don't need that last one. So yes, there we go. 
this is kind of purely just aesthetic. I, I don't know why, I just have a tendency to make these very symmetrical. So maybe don't do that, because then it's not as interesting, I don't know. I guess for... Oops. What did... Where'd my, sn my snapping got disabled? That's weird. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like that. There we go. I don't know. Uh, then we're going to want to go find our prefab of the exit door. Which I need to make a... I need to put it on a whole value. There we go. And this one is going to be offset. It won't be centered. So we'll just do like that. If you do want to center it, like I said, it doesn't matter. You can just add a 0.5 on here to make it line up nicely with the other blocks. Uh, I should have maybe done a 2x2 two two door, but it is what it is. I think this looks better. So yeah, this is our exit. We're going to make sure the exit door is actually part of the prefab here. Hmm. We're going to go into our cave. We're going to create a folder called exit. Inside of exit, we're going to put our, our cave, or cave exit one. We're going to delete it from the scene. And in our nodes, uh, end node, we are going to lock our end node and go to exit, drag and drop room cave in there. So yes, that should be all we need to do with that. Of course, it's not going to do much. I kind of just fleshed out some of the scripts. We're going to have to change it. If you can see, we have no errors and we should have a quite nice looking uh, map here. So now it makes a little more sense and yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I know our, what are these called, filler rooms don't look very nice right now. We're going to add some more. I just made a very generic one. So yes, that is what I've got for the exit and entrance doors. I think because this video is still a little short, I'm going to also add in the background and make the border walls. So I have to go actually draw up an asset, a, a new type of tile, I guess, if you want to call it that's going to make our border wall, and I will be back when that's done. Okay, I am back, and I made a asset, or sprite, for our wall. I honestly don't know how this is going to look. It's a little bit vibrant, so we'll see. We have to, of course, do pixels per unit 32, and no filter, and no compression, apply, and I'm going to, I don't know, start by just putting this in the world, then we're going to go to 0, 0, because I believe that is where our generator is at. Generator is also at 0, 0. So the solution is going to be, if the generator starts generating rooms, rooms are top left, that means it's this position, I believe. And actually, I shouldn't be duplicating this. Uh, we have to do some stuff first. So I'm going to add a Collider 2D. And that is all we need to do, I'm pretty sure. So, or at least for right now. Well, we might have to do some stuff later. So, yeah, I'm going to make that a quick prefab here. And just start duplicating it. So if this is, in theory, I don't know, that looks weird. <laughs> Let's see, so this is... If the rooms are 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there are four rooms. So we're just going to need oh, all of these. Duplicate. What is going on with the... Oh, I know what's going on. Yeah, if you hold... I'm going to just make sure I did that right. If you hold whatever, okay, paste. Oh, I use duplicate. I'm having struggles with this. Copy, paste. Going to just, yeah, why are these? I don't know why they're all offset, so. 
Uh, I guess we'll just use this. If you hold down control, it offsets them. And that, so that's what, three. Duplicate. That's four. Which means this is the wall. Down. And yeah, we just have to do the same thing going down. So that's one, it's two, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, okay. Duplicate down. So that's two. three and this is four so that means we have should be this I think and I'm just gonna go was that 32 to two duplicate that drag this all the way down and then this is 73 to 43 and we're just gonna duplicate that and go all the way down like this this is a little bit crazy we'll say uh, there Okay, so this is the border wall. I hope you guys made nicer looking sprites. I didn't. <laughs> Going to try. Yes, yeah, so it all fits in there, and I don't think that there's any overlap. We're gonna look though. No. Better check every side to be sure. I guess it's kind of oops, kind of redundant because I already know that. So, yeah, mm, there will be a little camera thing. I don't know if we're going to fix that by f freezing the camera, probably, or if we're going to fix it by uh, just making more tiles. So I guess when I come up with the answer to that and we have a player, uh, I guess I'll let you guys know. So, yeah, I'm going to make a component for this. It's just going to be called... Uh, border and we're just gonna take all of these little tiles and put them in the border I'm sure there's a better way to do this but I didn't do it that way so yep there we go <laughs> problem solving and then finally the last thing we're gonna do is go use that background sprite we're gonna just do 32 uh, point, none, apply. This one is not nearly as grueling. Background, we have to do our draw mode in tiled. And so what we should be able to do here, and this is going to actually have to be set behind everything. So we're going to do this at negative 10. Does that still not push it back? I have not, admittedly have not done or worked with the uh, Unity sprite thing in a while. And actually what I do need to do is to make this look a little nicer is we want to make that, oh it is 32, interesting. What is its rate? Oh, it's 200 by 200. Yeah, there we go. I don't know. Whatever you guys think looks better. You can just play around with that number and, I don't know, make it however you like. So, yeah, we just had to set it to tiled and then drag and position it like that. So, there we go. We are going to have to put this in the background. I thought that 
work, but I ha honestly have not used Unity in a long time, so I'm going to just make a layer for it. And it is going to be called background. And background is that? Okay, I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna go figure out how to put this in the background. That's kind of silly that I don't know how to do that. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I am a little bit silly. So yeah, we need to add a sorting layer. Actually, it's been a quite a long time since I've used Unity. So this is gonna be called background, and we're gonna be using more sorting layers at a different point. So yeah, we should be able to set this to I guess that would work negative one. Default, background, and then what we'd need to do is set everything else. So actually, I guess we won't have background. We'll just use sorting layer negative one, cause yay, cheap solutions. So I'm gonna go delete that. Okay, so yeah, uh, that was little bit silly that I don't know how to do that. Now when we should be able to generate our... Where, will, where did the background go? Uh, is it because of this? It's because it's too far away from the camera. Yes, it is. So I guess that is important. Scene. If we zoom in now, we have, or look on the camera, we now have our background. I honestly don't think it looks very nice right now. So, again, I hope you guys made a better background thingy than I did. Yeah, so, I guess we're probably going to go play with those settings. We could actually do it right here in the Unity thing. We could make it darker, which is what I think needs to happen. Uh, we could make it more purple which also might be cool. I don't know. I'm just going to do that and copy this code because when we stop our game, it's just going to go away. And I'm just going to paste that in there. And there we go. So yes, that is all I have for you guys today. I'm sorry I can't show the actual like uh, border working. Uh, I will try to get player up and running Maybe next week, it might be the following, I don't really know. Uh, so yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week for another video. Ender out.